and be glad in it. Let us draw near to God, and God will draw near to us. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, our gracious and loving Father, we thank you for this bright and beautiful day which you have made, and in which we can rejoice and be glad. We thank you for your presence with us, wherever we are. And today we thank you for your presence with us here in this place. We pray that all our hearts and minds may be filled with your Holy Spirit. We know, O oh God, that we are not worthy to be in your presence because we have sinned and fallen short of your glory. We have not loved you with all our heart and soul and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as we love ourselves. And because we have not loved, we have not served, we have not shared. And we are sorry now for all our misgivings. We need your mercy and pardon. We promise to be better persons. We promise to turn away from our sins. We promise to walk in the paths of righteousness and truth. We promise to repay all the wrongs we have done with things that are good and beautiful and true. Forgive us and bless us and grant that we may be worthy to be in your presence. O oh God, we thank you for all of us who are here at this time and we pray to be with those who are traveling to be here with us. Grant them journey mercy. And we pray that today, together, we may give glory to you and that we may also have fellowship with one another in this place. Bless our gathering. Help us all to do our best and grant that all that we see and do may be to your honor and glory. All these mercies we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a passage of scripture selected for today. It is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 16. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 16. Let us hear the word of God. I urge you then, I who am a prisoner because I serve the Lord, Live a life that measures up to the standard God set when he called you. Be always humble, gentle, and patient. Show your love by being tolerant with one another. Do your best to preserve the unity which the Spirit gives 
by means of the peace that binds you together. There is one body and one spirit, just as there is one hope to which God has called you. There is one law, one faith, one baptism. There is one God and Father of all, who is Lord of all, works through all, and is in all. Each one of us has received a special gift in proportion to what Christ has given. As the scripture says, when he went up to the very heights, he took many captives with him. He gave gifts to people. Now, what does he went up mean? It means that first he came down to the lowest depths of the earth. So the one who came down is the same one who went up above and beyond the heavens to fill the whole universe with his presence. It was he who gave gifts to people. He appointed some to be apostles, others to be prophets, others to be evangelists, others to be pastors and teachers. He did this to prepare all God's people for the work of Christian service in order to build up the body of Christ. And so we shall all come together to that oneness in our faith and in our knowledge of the Son of God. We shall become mature people, reaching to the very height of God's full stature. Then we shall no longer be children, carried by the waves and blown about by every shifting wind of the teaching of deceitful men, who lead others into error by the tricks they invent. Instead, by speaking the truth in a spirit of love, we must grow up in every way to Christ, who is the head. Under his control, all the different parts of the body fit together, and the whole body is held together by every joint with which it is provided. So when each part works as it should, the whole body grows up and builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his good. Now we want to invite you to sing the hymn, the hymn to God be the glory. And we'll ask the choir to lead us. Will you please stand? Today. More people are going to come. For example, I heard 
Yesterday I heard a choir say we are on for 3 o'clock this evening. So it means that they have their things to do and others coming from various parts of Trinidad in the course of the day they are going to drop in to join us. We are glad for the presence of all. Mr. Jeet spoke to me some time ago about this coming together of the Presbyterian talents, the skills that we have in our church, bringing them together. He has retired from regular full-time work on the 31st of August 2006 and uh, when talking to me about this this fellowship morning or this fellowship day he had in mind he said it's a long time now this was in his in his mind in his in the planning in thought but maybe full-time work took him away from giving his very best to having a function like this. And he told me that he wants to have a day like this to give back to the Presbyterian, and these are his exact words, to give back to the Presbyterian Church some of what he has gotten from the Church. I know now that he has retired, this is only the beginning of giving back. He cannot give back, none of you can ever give back to the Presbyterian Church the essence that we have received to spice up our life all of these years. And today on behalf of all of you, on behalf of the Presbyterian Church in Trinidad and Tobago, the moderator, the general secretary, and synodical council, we want to, I want to personally say thanks. Thanks to Mr. Jeet for his vision and for the time he has spent in planning this day for us. Today's concert is an assembly of various talents and various gifts and skills in the Presbyterian Church. We wouldn't have all, of course. Some, some must have been tired after their service and witness yesterday. But we are very glad that we can come together to remind ourselves of something. And Reverend York read from Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13, and I want to leave this with you. If we are looking for what, we are trying to define what is the essence of the Presbyterian presence. What is the essence? What is this the heart uh, is at the heart of the Presbyterian presence? And Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13 says, And so we shall all come together to that oneness of faith. The essence might just be found there. The essence of Presbyterianism, our oneness in faith. And we find ourselves only yesterday, somebody was talking about their cathedral church, now it's not a south church, it's a central church. Their main church which they call their cathedral church in the pastoral region. And then you have very small churches too. The essence of, of the Presbyterian presence is found in those small rural congregations as well as in the medium size and in the very large congregations. And we thank God for this oneness. St. Paul says to the Ephesians, our oneness in faith, and that's important, bringing us together, looking at our talents and sharing this faith, uh, focuses on the oneness in Presbyterians. Whether we come from small families, poor families, big churches, medium-sized churches, or rural churches, there is a oneness that is very beautiful about Presbyterianism. And that we celebrate that today in this function. Now, the last thing I want to say in this short meditation is that today is Republic Day. Today is the public holiday. And uh, the, the essence of nationalism, the life of Trinidad and Tobago from 1868 has always been touched by Presbyterianism. And uh, no matter what anybody does right now, they cannot write the history of the Presbyterian, of Trinidad and Tobago without including the contribution to the development of this country by Presbyterians since the time we came here. And Mr. Jeet, I'm talking about the oneness in our faith, and I wanted to, to link this with the national spirit today of Republican, Repo Republicanism and celebrating Republic Day or Independence Day or anything that is national. 
and to say that the essence of the Presbyterian presence in this nation is that we have been a servant church. That's the essence of it if we want to apply it to the observance of Republic Day. The Presbyterian Church has been a servant church, and that is important. It's a very important understanding of our presence here in Trinidad and Tobago. The essence of Presbyterianism is servanthood. We have been a servant church. A servant church very early serving people who were neglected in the estates. A servant church that served in an area where men and women needed education. So we built the primary schools and the high schools and the vocational schools. A church that served poor people and middle class people, upper class people. A servant church is, is what the Presbyterian presence is all about in Trinidad and Tobago, and we must never lose that. We have been accused of being a middle class church. That is never so. We serve all people, and the servant is the one who reaches out wherever there is a need, to all the rural areas, and now in the urban areas. And today we thank God that we can celebrate these two things. Our oneness as a people, and that is the essence that keeps the synod together, and this other part of our presence in the, in the nation, in the country. The essence of Presbyterianism on this Republic Day, the essence of Presbyterianism in the interpretation of the history of Trinidad and Tobago is that of servanthood. We have been a servant church. I'm going to retire in six weeks' time, and I am very, very happy and proud and delighted to have served this wonderful church for these 39 years. I've been a great church. I have no regrets. And if I have to choose again, I will choose no other church but this one. So once again, I want to join with all the choirs and all the talented people who will be taking part in this function in extending our gratitude to Mr. Jeet for spending his time in bringing us together. The essence of Presbyterianism as far as our church congregations are concerned, that essence is our oneness. The essence of Presbyterianism in the national context is servanthood. Let us pray. Almighty God, our loving Father, we give you thanks and praise for this beautiful morning and this wonderful day that will unfold before us. For those who are driving up, for those who have been practicing for this concert, we give you thanks, and we ask that your divine Holy Spirit will be with us. Grant us your blessings, almighty God. The essence of our own faith is the presence and power of Jesus Christ, inspiring, guiding, and leading all we do. We thank you for our dear brother, Mr. Jeet, that at his retirement from full-time service in industry, that you will hear his prayers of thanksgiving that you will bless him and bless his family and his loved ones. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Pleasant good morning to everyone. My task is a simple one. It's to introduce to you our hostess and she'll be having a co-host to carry us throughout the day with the rest of our program. I'd like to introduce our hostess, Mrs. Jeet. She is a teacher tree at Asha Gills College, also a part-time tutor with the University of the West Indies. She's also the past secretary of the Susupacha Presbyterian Church and an elder. Ladies and gentlemen, the co-host, Mr. Satnarin Ramnath, he's a part-time preacher as well as student minister. He preaches all the way from Cedras at times up to Hoover as well. He's doing a wonderful job in the preaching area. He's the chairman of the Bonaventure Presbyterian Church. 
Ladies and gentlemen, to carry us out through the rest of the day's program, our hostess, Mrs. Gita Jeet, assisted by co host, Mr. Satai Ramdas. Good morning to all. Many thanks to Mr. Lincoln Jeet for his warm uh, reception and introduction this morning. Um, our beloved ministers, fellow Presbyterian members, members of all the churches, guests, especially invited guests. It is indeed my pleasure this morning to be part of this dream of Mr. Jones Jeet who happens to be my brother-in-law, um, whom I've known for many, many years. And I know that today is a very special day for him. And I feel extremely honored that he chose uh, Mr. Ramnath and myself to be part of this dream. So we shall do our very, very best to guide you through the program during the course of the day. We promise that you won't be bored because we have loads and loads of really great talent. You know, Presbyterian Church has lots and lots of talent. So today, we are going to be treated to many delights of song, music, um, that we have puppet pieces as well, we have comedy. So I invite you to relax, enjoy, and uh, rejoice in the presence of God and each other on this the 30th anniversary of our Republic Day. So uh, let the essence of the Presbyterian presence unfold as uh, I take you during the, co the course of the program. So thanks again, um, Jonesy, for having me take share in your dream. I am honored so to do. So without further ado, I would like to call on Mr. Jeet to start us off. Well, continue really. We have, our ministers have set the tone in prayer. And now that we have asked God to be part of our presence, of our gathering, I shall invite the audience to stand as Mr. Jeet leads us in the national anthem. So we pay tribute now to our country.
I think they deserve a nice round of applause because I think we've already gotten our money to so. But that was certainly really, really fantastic. So let's hear it again for the North Presbyterian Church Choir. I'm sure now your, your, your appetite is whetted for what is to come. Um, we have so many things here this morning, but I, I'm sure you really enjoy that. So thanks again to the North Presbyterian Choir. At this point again, I shall have to recall Mr. Jones Street to officially welcome everyone to the day's proceedings. So, Mr. Jones Jeet, who we... In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, welcome, welcome, welcome. Reverend Daniel Tilofsky, a past reverend from our church, and the present reverend we have now, Reverend Mr. Arthur York. We are honored by having you this morning for sharing in the devotion. Thank you very much. Invited guests, performers, fellow Presbyterians, and our charming hostess, Mrs. Peter G. The pleasure is mine to make you comfortable by showcasing the artistic talents of our Presbyterian brothers and sisters. While we were searching for a centrally located venue with the appropriate acoustics and setting, we decided to stage this gala event at the Capildale, Rujana Capildale Learning Resource Center. A suitable environment to highlight, appreciate, and pay tribute to the talent that abounds in our Presbyterian community. Today, you will be entertained by artists who have graced the stage nationally regionally and internationally. You will be delighted by the various choirs, musicians, soloists, puppeteers, and a world-renowned comedian. Furthermore, today, the 30th anniversary of our Republic is just a fitting opportunity to commemorate, to commemorate this occasion with an exhibition of our artistic skills, which we have entitled The Essence of the Presbyterian Presence. In closing, once again, let me welcome all of you. Do relax and enjoy the program. God bless. Thank you. for your warm welcome and now we get back into the, the artists we have here from Pinal and Debe we have the little missionaries who are going to do for us a liturgical dance the little missionaries let's say a round of applause for the little missionaries from Pinal and Debe region
sure you know they deserve more applause than that. So let's say it again for them. Uh, I, I wish I could do that, maybe if I were younger. Okay, I'm moving from the little missionaries who I heard some people say weren't so little. Um, we're moving on to the keyboard. So you see we have a variety of items for you. So from the dance, we move to the keyboard. And uh, to entertain us this morning with Aries 2 and Danny Boy, we have Mrs. Sheila Cantapasad. So I would like to invite Mrs. Sheila Cantapasad, who's also from Knox Presbyterian. So you see we kind of move in the different regions as well throughout uh, the, um, the Republic of Trinidad. So Mrs. Sheila Cantapasad, the stage is now all yours.
thank you, Jonesy, for putting this together because some of us might never have known. Right, moving again, we have uh, another person from Knox Presbyterian Church who will entertain us this morning. It is Mrs. Margaret White. Now, I don't know if it's white or white. I don't quite know. You know, I like to say quite. My students know me as Mrs. Reed likes to say quite. But I don't know if it's Mrs. Margaret White or white, but she will let us know. And she is doing a song for us called From a Distance. Mrs. Margaret. Uh, Margaret. Let's call her Margaret. If anybody needs a bathroom, 
It's uh, right out there, right? To, when you come out, it's to the, to the left, to the left. When you come out, it's to the left, okay? If you so need the bathroom. Okay, and now we're moving to another member of the North Presbyterian Church who will render for us to God be the glory, Johanna Sipasad.
I should be thanking Jacqueline Ramdani, and I think it's her husband, Vinu Ramdani, for coming to her on the drum, because you see her now, Jackie, as I know she's called on stage all the time. So let's have a round of applause for Jackie and Vinu. from Knox Presbyterian, and that's Faye Ramsaran Rambaros, who is going to delight us with there is a candle and Lord God of Abraham. So I introduce to you Faye Ramsaran Rambaros. There is a Candle. 
you forgot you were hungry, because that was really fantastic. So let's hear it for the La Romaine Choir, led by Diane Dunat. Here I am to worship, he's exalted, and hear my cry. Well done. So don't feel too hungry yet, because we're almost getting to the lunch hour. But before you get to go to eat lunch, we have, from the La Romaine Choir as well, Deborah Sugrim, who I shall invite to come on stage to do for us, You Raise Me Up. Deborah Sugrim. from the La Romaine Choir. So I would like to introduce for your pleasure Mr. Colin Lizama, who will do for us Jesus is the Answer. Colin Lizama from La Romaine. Um, you know, in the troubled times our country is facing, we as Christian people, we all know that there is one answer and one solution for all our problems. That's putting Christ back in everything that we do. Jesus is the answer. Amen. Sound room when you're ready. Thank you. 
above him. There's no other. Don't you know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? Jesus is the answer. Above him, no other. Don't you know that Jesus is the way? Won't you hear this now? If you've got some questions in the corners of your mind, to races of discouragement and peace that just can't seem to find reflections of your past, leave it there, seem to face you every day. This one thing I do know, Jesus is the way. Writer, you know, he's a singer, writer, calypsonian, comedian, 
as well as my brother-in-law. That's his main thing, really. Um, so um, when he would come home at work from work at night, because he was a shift worker, he would try to write this song, and it would come to him in between going to work. So let's see how well he did it. It's called Come Unto Me. So I'd like to invite Jonesy Jeet back to the stage to perform for us right now, Come Unto Me. Jonesy. Let's give the backup singers a round of applause on this opportunity. Everybody's talented. And today people are discovering their talent, latent talent, that they call that. But um, come in, come in and have a seat. It's a pleasure. Some people are coming in there. Yeah, it's beautiful, a beautiful morning. <laughs> Thank you. 
in the sky like a pillar of money. Flying high in the sky, these boys I knew. You're my son, you're a child of the universe. Come on to me if you want the world. Come on to me if you want the world. Thank you very much, our backup singers, instrumentalists, um, and the audience. Uh, let's get to the audience. Give yourself a round of applause. Being beautiful, and Mrs. Sheet. <laughs> yeah, so beautiful. It's a beautiful morning. in the morning, that's when he's writing, probably when he's taking a little five from his job too. So, uh, you know he's writer, composer, singer, so we're seeing different facets. Uh, no wonder he wishes today to give thanks to God for all, all the blessings that God has given to him and to all of us as we are here. I, want, I would like to acknowledge all those who um, were in the, in the background there. Um, Sheldon on the drum, let's hear it for Sheldon. Um, is it Javed? Javed on the drum as well. With the shack shack we have Lisa. And Iron Man, don't really ask me, Iron Man is Vinu. And Top Top is Cassandra. And then we have my sister, who I didn't know could sing until just now. And the guitarist, of course. My sister is Sita, okay? She's Sita and Vita. Sita or Vita. For those of you of my age might remember that was an Indian movie many, many moons ago. And maybe nobody here can remember that. <laughs> okay, it was a very popular show when I was very young. And on the guitar, of course, we have Jackie, who has been really, really entertaining us this morning. So uh, let's hear it for uh, the nuts folks uh, who have been really wonderful this morning, backing up uh, um, all our performers. And uh, now I'd like to go back to La Romaine. Well, they have really been wonderful this morning. And I also want to acknowledge Chadwick and Terry, who had accompanied Deborah a little while ago. And Deborah did raise me up. Uh, and she had a company, her two cousins of Mr. G, Chadwick and Terry. So let's hear it for all of them who took time here to be with us today. To introduce the steel band, the La Romaine steel band, they will be doing um, Eagles, Wings, and Shine, Jesus, Shine, and then they will take us into lunch. Now, Jonesy has provided some refreshments, some light refreshments for all of us. But I'm told that we can't have anything in here, so that we will have to get that outside. And uh, well, we can refresh ourselves on the outside, but um, I believe the rule in the auditorium is no eating or drinking. So we will have to um, nourish ourselves so a little outside, so that's not the problem. So please, um, I would like to invite the La Romaine Steel Band side to entertain us with eagle's wings shine jesus shine and then they have also kindly assented uh, i think they volunteered not assented to entertain us during the half an hour lunch break so once again we have the folks from la Romaine to take yeah, us into yeah. the lunch break. so welcome to the la Romaine steel band
different gifts. I can sing, but I can paint. He enjoys watching us use the gifts he's given us. You don't bring glory to God by hiding your abilities. The Bible says he has shaped each person in turn. Now he watches everything we do. But, but I don't want the gifts. Anytime you reject part of yourself, you are rejecting God's wisdom in creating you. The Bible says you have no right to argue with your creator. You are merely a clay pot shaped by the potter. The clay doesn't ask, why did you make me this way? Wait now. You don't preach an old. I just don't want you to lose your wonderful gift. Mary, come let me tell you a story Jesus told. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a king. <laughs> a king who had many talents. This king decided to go on an exotic journey. So he called to his servants who came bowing low. To the first servant he gave five talents. To the second he gave two talents. And to the third he gave one talent. Then the king left on his exotic journey. The first servant practiced and practiced because he wanted to be obedient to the king. So too did the second servant. He wanted to be obedient to the king also. But the third servant, he was really angry. He said, I only got one talent and all of them got all the talents. So I am not even going to bother. I am going to party all night long. <laughs> After some time, the king <laughs> returned from his exotic journey. He called to his servants who came bowing low. And they gave him this account.
black and white. It doesn't mean anything to us. It's not colorful. It's not something that we want to fill our lives with. But if we really trust Jesus Christ and we study his word and what he has promised us, our lives could be like this. And I leave you with that.
All right, what do you want to do? All of you have heard about the arm of God. Yes. Okay, a few people have heard about the arm of God. So the rest of you will learn it today. Now, the arm of God, we have to put on our shield of faith. Okay? So this is what I want you to do, and you're going to follow me. But I'm going to have two assistants with me. You all will follow them. Okay? There will also be the chorus. The chorus is what you'll be doing. And the actual verses is what I will do. So let's get busy. Shield of faith. Follow them. Okay, let's see. We're not um, driving any flies, okay? I have none here, so we'll try that. Shield of faith. Sword of the Spirit. Share God's love. To the world so they hear it. The breastplate on. Stand firm in the Spirit. Oh, yeah, say that louder. I'm not going on here now. Okay, let's try it again. Shield of faith. Sword of the Spirit. Share God's love. To the world so we hear it. And the breastplate on. Stand strong in the Spirit. Shout hallelujah. Now we're going to put on the bottom half now of the armor. Okay? Beautiful feet. Send peace to the nation. Cover yourself with the helmet of salvation. With the belt of truth. Is your final preparation. Then shout hallelujah. Now, you ready to go with it? Okay, so just follow the assistants, okay? Pump it up. Yeah. 
the lights. So you will be immersed in complete darkness. So I want you all to remain in your seats. I want to move my computer don't want anything to happen to you, okay? Um, it's something that we are trying for the first time, and I hope you all appreciate it. So give us a couple minutes to organize, okay? Okay? <laughs>
the room, you can't see him. He's all black in back then. Uh, my husband is a video take out of the photo man here. Uh, my friend Stacy. All right. Yeah. And um, Daddy. so. Oh, Daddy. 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 Yeah. And he is somewhere else. Oh, yes, he has been friend Daddy. My friend is from work, so thank you.
Because every day, according to the song I sang, every day, the Creator is creating new galaxies. That is in the song. So, I was fortunate to listen to this guy. When I was about four, performing at Bonaventure Press, he's 19 years older than I am, so he was 23. He was doing his thing in comedy. When I was seven, I performed with the Bonaventure School Crier at Radio Trinidad then. He was performing, so he was about 30. When I was 13 years old, I used to listen to his show on radio with Sam Garni, etc. Jail and fear. Everything I hear in this morning. When I was 13, I was privileged to see him perform at Bonaventure Presbyterian School. That's nine years. Uh, <laughs> probably went to no age. I commented that just now. So he was performing when I was, that's 13. When I was 23 years old, two years after Saito I went to Expo Grenada. This gentleman was performing, representing Trinidad. There was Duke, there was Bomber, Sparrow Sang, and this guy was there. And I felt proud talking to him because I used to listen to his shows. That's Pearl, Pearl's airport. Grenada. He broke down the place for Trinidad night, the mashup. Them fellas who talk about we were mashup place. Them are jokers. They can't mash up no place. He mash up the place. They call it true blue. After the Yankee came and they mash up the place for that. <laughs> but he really mash up the place in 1969. October 1963. No, 69. But so we kept. I, at the one stage, I wanted to see this man, class, he has class, like the puppeteers here. I said, well, I want to get on to talk to them. I want to write some jokes for him, because I used to do, every week, I had to do three jokes in school. We had a period called homeroom. They should bring back this, this, or the curriculum. That's what they call it, curriculum. Bring back concert, bring back local talent. I had to do three jokes every week. On, in my class. So I used to take a little thing from him, I make it up on Then in 1974, I was privileged to do a taping call on Let's Laugh Show. He was there, he was a renowned comedian. And uh, when he went to tape, I'm looking to see him damn man clapping, boy. He and Horace James, the guy that did Sawati. I didn't see what the business, all the terms are using. Sawati means big. Little P, what is going? We're going to that too. So I said, when I do so, I give a punchline. I, I peek so. I see this man clapping. I see Horace James clapping. I said, well, Josie, you know you're good, but keep them clapping. You're real good. <laughs> well, I raise up myself in a humble way. You bring it on by the free. Eh? <laughs> so I, was back. I went to the embassy one day. And I went down by Mr. Govaya to get a little hot dog to go back to the embassy because today now the fingerprinting here. Yeah? Well, you know that. Everybody here could go, right? We have a fingerprint. So then we reached down there, boy. Mr. Govaya said, he used to call him Mr. G. He said, look your partner coming, Mr. Back. I said, who is that? He said, why are you calling me? He said, okay, I said, he said, he talk, he said, he said, Joe, see how you're going. He said, all right. So what are you doing now? But I learned nothing in showbiz, let me tell you. Anytime a talent scout or a producer of any show ask you what you're doing, you're doing nothing right now. You have time. I say, I do nothing. He said, you come on my radio channel, you take a show. You can see how the program going. I say, yeah. I say, but wait. I have to drop to work down for my sister. No, she waited for a visa. He said, all right, right. right. I fix up that. When I go on there, I watch the show. I say, um, you want to come next week and bring five jokes, huh? Every day we do one of yours, boy. I feel it real good, you know, to work with our man on a radio show. And for this, I must always be thankful. I'm thankful, grateful. I worked four years with him on radio. Nobody in showbiz, let me tell you that. Nobody in showbiz ever give anybody a break on their show. If you check trade ideas and check all the artists balling, nobody gives them a break. So thankful to him. So I say, wait, I'm on this man performing all about. Let me tell you what he performed. Every village, every jail and fair, every concert. 
We don't have two radio stations. Well, every radio station then. Yeah. <laughs> two radio stations. We have 40, now we have 50. We're going to be on all the radio stations. All the channels at the time. I said, this man is great, boy. I'm on performing in Howard University. 20 year contract year. When we were in college, I said, Josie, if you had to pattern your style in comedy, that is the man. He and Jerry Lewis. You better look at Jerry Lewis. <laughs> I don't make my face at Jerry Lewis. Somewhere. That is the business. So I said, but we hear this man in Woodford Square coming live. Jay Lang here. He going to the university. He going to the churches. You have to be great. To do clean comedy, you have to be great. To do clean comedy, I'm telling you, it's hard, very hard. It's a gift, it's a talent. People go do smarty comedy, they're com um, they feel like the jokers. They're not comedians, they're jokers. Right? So I said, but wait, this one. So I've been doing the show for years, listening to him. For 30 years, I've known him since 1974 as friends. All you do the maths, I'm not going into maths. I'm not teaching, you are teaching. Right? So all these years, this man has been performing. He's 79 years. He born on the 20, I tell you, the 24th of July when all the head and gun shot, 1927. Right? He's a Leo, by a Leo also. By born in August, August 8th, I was 60. How are looking for that? Tell me. Yes, yes. Yes. That's a blessing, God bless, right? So, this man has performed throughout the world. Canada, USA, until a 20 year contract in Harvard University. Every place in Trinidad, all of the Caribbean, all over, under. And ladies and gentlemen, the man I'm going to bring on today, who was born on the 24th of July, 1927, in Caratal Village, Komoto, when they have five months of pot of pop, 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 pop. He was Ramdin Ramjatan. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring to you a man. Let's say it. Let's say it again. A man who's been doing comedy for the last 57 years, going to 60 years. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring on stage John. Let's say John. John Ashton. Who are you? I 
sir. Mission agitation, sir. He said, I really think you're walking in like, here, like you're the boss here. Listen, we have rules here. I said, sir, I just did. It's not here. Did it not happen? It's here. I have to come. He said, well, you probably you have to come here, but we have rules. Here are two pieces of chalk. Go on that blackboard, the big like that, eh? and write all your sin. I have to check you out before I could decide where you're going. Well, you boy nervous. I start to write, Papa. Before I have went through, the two chalk done. <laughs> I said, so, I don't know your name is I'm St. Peter. I said, well, St. Peter, I have a problem. He said, oh yeah, what's your problem? I said, well, I don't know if this has always happened. But my chalk done, you know. <laughs> So okay, no problem. This is normal. This happens all the time. You see that step there? Take that step. And go down there, you'll see a room. In that room, have all the chalk you want. Take how much you want. But boy, if you see chalk in the place, <laughs> every shelf is chalk. Well, I was very considerate. I take two more sticks. Put my pocket on it. I said, take this step, come it up. Let me show you how it was. <laughs> this is true, eh? You know that joke? As I take this step, I bounce up with my reverend. <laughs> I say, Rev, you dead too? <laughs> I say, yes, John. I say, I know what happened, you know. You were out at you. <laughs> I say, you're damn all right, yes? I want another black one. <laughs> something in, just before Republic Day, that remain in my mind indelibly up to now. You would remember that he was a man who wanted to do something for these people, for we people. And what he wanted to do, he was such a, he didn't even know himself. And he put agricultural farms in Waller Field, in Carlson Field, and trying all kind of development to build the economy of this country without success. Because after the first year, the farms start to fail. He had a problem, and this is how we handle the problem. I want you to uh, doing this so you can get an idea what he looked like. <laughs> And this conversation took place at White House in Marvel Road. <clears throat> he called in his senior economist, whose name was Mr. Rampasad, Frank Rampasad. The older people will remember. And this was the dialogue that took place, Mr. Rampasad. You must have heard that this country is heading into a financial crisis. 
we cannot get any loans from Great Britain and all our negotiations with the United States of America for any grants has failed. Mr. Rampasad, we have no money. I need your advice. And Rampasad said, Doctor, if you follow the trend of history, you will see that any nation in the world who declare war against the United States of America, after they lose the war, America usually rehabilitate the countries. That's what Grandpa said. And the doc looked at him and said, and suppose we win the war. <laughs> When Grenada was facing all the problems, they declared war against the United States of America. And today, Grenada is like America. They rehabilitated the island. Rehabilitated, rehabilitated the island. However, another international thing that happened, all in that break, that amused me in the course of my career, is when President Bush wanted to get into Iraq. And this is how he went about it. I'm talking too much of good English now. I don't talk good English, I just talk bad English. He went to the United Nations Security Council and tell them he must go into Iraq because Iraq have weapons of mass destruction. All you remember reading that? Yeah. Be with me. Yeah. I don't lie. <laughs> and the United Nations tell him, Bush, you sit down. We have to prove first what you're saying is correct. So we're going to send in our inspectors, and if they find the weapons you're talking about, then we will decide whether you should go in or not. Right? Which is a logical thing. And they send the inspectors, they call back Bush and say, well, we have find no weapon of mass destruction, you know, Mr. Bush. So we can't let you go in. A few months later, he made a return bout he said, to the United Nations Security Council, I must go into Iraq. You know why? Saddam is insane. <laughs> this is what he said. Saddam is insane. I must go into Iraq. But while he telling the United Nations Security Council, Saddam is insane, the Iraqis were not saying that. They say it is Saddam Hussein. <laughs> How are we going to talk? Let me get up to myself. Well, I get up the other morning and I get in dressed to go by a friend in Cascade, Papa. No. I have friends too, you know. All of you are my friends. And when we meet in church on Sunday morning, we have a way with us shake each other's hand. All of us do that too. Yes. And part of the sermon are talking about, you know. Part of the sermon we have to greet each other. So, I see Reverend Mary Ram here. Our nice Reverend. Cyril Paul, you know him? Yes. Poor fella, he had to resign. <laughs> I don't know why you take up a profession like me, we don't resign. <laughs> when we dead, we don't know that. <laughs> and I want to tell you, before I get down, this happened in reality. Cyril Paul was, I think he is still, I don't know, since he retired, probably he retired. The chairman of the IRO. All you know what that is? Yeah. Tell me what it is. Yeah. Right. So their executive meet one evening and they said, boy, we have to talk about the crime situation in this country. Ganga, you agree with that? Talk to me. See, what? Anybody know sign language? <laughs> It's nice having you. <laughs> yes, they said it is imperative that we do 
something about the crime situation. So one fella get up and say, listen, I have a suggestion. They are all religious preachers and leaders and things like that, you know. So they are concerned. Too many people getting killed in Trinidad. And one fella said, listen, Mr. Sir Paul, we have to get the Bible to people. Let them read the Bible. And if they are reading the Bible, they will know that they cannot give life. Why take it? We want people to understand that. Let me reach the Bible to people. I say, well, how are we going to do that? I say, well, first thing, we have to reduce the price of Bible. I go suggest you that. Somebody bring it up, man. We need to check it. You're going to get in trouble with this bed, and some of you feel you want to get married. But they will say you want to get divorced. <laughs> yes! So they suggested they want volunteers to go and sell Bibles. That was a good move, man. Eh? Do you agree with that? Yeah. yeah, that was a good move. So they asked for volunteers. I fell put up your hand. He said, How much you want? He said, Rev, give me two. Give me two Bibles. And you? He said, Give me four. I go start with four. He said, well, let me tell you, if I just sell out your Bibles and you want more, come to the library. I will uh, register it in the book and give you. I kind of stumbled for the back, they put up your hand. He said, give me ten. The man said, we could hardly talk. How are you going to sell them Bible? He said, we could try. Give me ten. Friday they come to balance all who sell. What they sell. Fella sell it two. And then the clan sell it four, some sell three. He's talking fella. How much you sell? He says, rev, rev, rev. Uh, 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 sell up all. He said, boy, is that good sales? But what do you tell them people? He said, me, tell them nothing. I just tell them, uh, uh, sell it. Bible. But, but you have to, to, to buy it, you know. I, I, I could re read it for you. I'm going back to 
friend I didn't see for a long time. So he and I sit down in the porch and talking while he and his wife preparing lunch. And they have a nice little four and a half year old daughter. And she has a brilliant sparkle in her voice. Are you like that? Yeah, yeah. So while I'm talking to him, I hear the child talking to the mother in the kitchen. And this is what the child was saying. Mommy, she says to her, and angels fly. She says, darling, angels do fly. But mommy, how we serve and do fly? <laughs> she said, well, we serve and is not an angel. He said, uh -huh. you think you could fool me that? Daddy, when you wasn't home, I heard daddy calling she an angel. <laughs> Park my car and I walk in down. When I reach my Griffiths Church, I don't know Griffiths Church. Yeah. I wanna win just you know. Yeah. I must go this right time. Everybody get green. <laughs> then you have all people in church. So I want you to join the gang. I pass it and I talk and talk. And as I leave the church walking on, that is a place noted in front of church to have beggars. Who I know that? <coughs> and they have a special frequency there is begging it. Help the blind. Help the blind. I don't know where so much of blind people come to. They have run away from the blind school. However, I had 25 cents in my pocket. I dropped it in the hand. But as I'm walking away, like a moody fella. So I said, I wonder if it's he boy. I said, let me go and make sure. I said, Henry. Is you what? How long you get blind, boy? Sorry to see this. He said, Aji, you know your mouth. I said, well, what happened? He said, I got tell you the truth, you know. But what's your mouth, eh? Me real blind, you know. He's a blind partner, man, you're going to see a movie and I'm holding on for him. <laughs> In this 
There are night a big quarrel over the road where I live in the, the wife and the husband quarreling. Every Friday night you have to come home drunk. And in between it has come home drunk. Look, tomorrow is Saturday. You have no money to go in the market to buy food for the children. As sure as hear that. Why does that really have pressure? And the only way to release the pressure is to pour it. By getting them no way, you know, because the rub is the boss. Fernandez. Eh? Fernandez. You know, you know it, you already brand them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I listened to the quarrel. She said, look, this is the last weekend I give you. I don't mind you buying rum for one or two respectable people, but for Tom, Dick, and Harry, you went and drink out the rum, and look at my position this evening. Listen, if you come home like that next week, I leave in you. I'm going by my mother. Like one lady says, she doesn't go by to mother regularly. I say, you go by my mother. The only hope she has is she mother. Yes, I'm going back by my mother. i done with you. So you fella, one day I come drunk by watching him do it, because I'm sorry for the lady. And the children, and the two children. Tuesday comes sober. Wednesday, sober. Thursday, he had drink. Friday, he coming home, boy. But he can't pass the wrong job. Friday, the day the boys will be there. They drink it, and he coming home drunk. My reverend, he passed out. We reverend. I see him in the audience, he go back and with the story. <laughs> he lived in the same street with me. So he's a helpful fella to him. So he see the boy go He said, I'm my son, oh, can I give you a lift home? He said, thank you, Reverend. But let's call him Reverend, regardless. He's, a, he's not really a Reverend, but he doesn't really go for Reverend. <laughs> So he said, long and Mr. Reverend Sipas had cut the rum in the head, light a cigarette, blowing the smoke all in the gentleman's face. <sighs> but he drunk like hell, excuse me, like So when he drunk, the Reverend, the way he lived in. He said, my son, you're at home now, you could come out. He said, Reverend, if you have one minute, sir, come, son, come, come. You don't mind, come. Yes, yes. I want to show you the reaction to the action. He said, Rev, it is one minute, sir. Come in with me now. He's pulling on the pulling the weapon out of the car. Reverend said, No, you need your rest. Go have your rest, son. Go have your rest. He said, Rev, I want you to come in with me. I only want my wife to see the kind of fellas I am with you. This is what comedy is all about, especially clean comedy. When I call John and I say, John, I say, your boy doing a show entitled The Essence of the Presbyterian Presence. And I just hinted to him what it will be like. He said, But you will see, I have to be there, man. So let's give him a round of applause for that. Accepting the invitation on the telephone. John Agitation is an elder. Is the Komoto um Karatal. Karatal, Karatal. School. He's an elder. He was a, poli a part time politician once. But we don't want to go back in politics for the people to win or this one to lose. So let's give him a round of applause for being an elder. Practicing. I would like to say here this evening um, the standard, the standard of performance. Uh, I don't know if the puppeteers, if they're still here, but I was intrigued. I couldn't believe that. I know Presbyterians are talented, but if you look in every facet, Presbyterians, not only in educating people, because this, this, this here is a highlight. Presbyterians are mainly known in the field of education. I think we have five colleges and about how many schools? A hundred? 
82 schools. 72. 72. Oh, well, you're in Princeton. <laughs> but we have five colleges, 82 schools. Everybody wants to go to what? A Presbyterian school and college. And the same way they want to go to the school and college. I feel we could have more like this concerts and let people know. So they, it's, they go into the church and some the school. What do you think? What do you think about that? Let's get them in the church and some the school. So let's give John our education a round of applause and let's bring on our chairman hostess to carry us through the remainder of the afternoon. Let's give Mrs. Gita G a round of applause. Let's bring her on. Yeah. You'll be doing a wonderful job. <laughs> well, I'm going to try something. First time I'm ever going to do this, I'm going to try something here. Mr. Agitation has sort of put a certain mood. And so be a little gentle because I've never told a joke in public before. So if you don't want to laugh, don't laugh. But you remember he was talking about the US invasion of Iraq. And you remember when they went to Iraq, they were dropping bombs and so on in Baghdad and so on. So after a while, they, uh, Saddam and his sons had to leave. So they were driving out of the city now and going, but then they realized they needed food. So they stopped at a grocery. And the son went out to get the groceries and come back, and Saddam stayed in the car, have it ready to leave. So he's waiting there, and then the son comes back. So he said, all this, the groceries in his son's hand. So he said, but what happened? How did he give you all the food in your hand? So, so he look around and he say, no Baghdad, no Baghdad. <laughs> Good, so there, I've done it. <laughs> okay, so now we moved from the puppeteers to comedy. Now we're moving back to our choirs. And uh, we have, before the choir go, we have Indra Ramsaran from the Penal Presbyterian Church who will do for us a piece on the mouth order. So we have a musical. So I would like to invite Ms. Indra Ramsaran from Penal Press to do for us on the mouth organ, My Jesus, I Love Thee.
another round of applause for Ben um, We're moving on now to a soloist. We have a solo act coming up, Calvin Sukanse. Mr. Calvin Sukanse, who will do This Is My Desire. And to follow that, we, we have a duet with Calvin, with Johnny Philip, and they will be doing Then I Met Jesus. So could we invite Kelvin to come on stage, Mr. Kelvin Sokensi, who will do This Is My Desire, and then we will be joined by Mr. John Philip to do our duet, Then I Met Jesus. Oh, 
His son, his only son, his only begotten son, to live on earth through a virgin birth, the holy virgin birth. He had to become flesh and blood to experience hunger and thirst. Although he was the son of God, was allowed to be tempted first. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word from God. Take these kingdoms and the stone, do not tempt the Lord thy God. He'll blind the dumb, lep and lame, rose Lazarus from the dead. Five loaves and two fish, blessing Jehovah's name, five thousand Jesus fed. Cast the first stone who is without sin Save the prostitute by the well God loves so pure there's no substitute At their feet every pebble fell 